Something about standing in an abandoned place fires the imagination of us all. If we close our eyes, we like to think we can hear the people who once filled these places with life. If we concentrate hard, we can almost see these abandoned spaces as they were before they were forgotten. There are some stunning abandoned places all over the planet, and some of the best of them are in this video. Our first abandoned place is quite a mystery. It's the Shell Grotto in Margate, England, and it was found quite by accident by a farmer digging on his land with a shovel in 1835. He unwittingly broke through the roof of the grotto, and after realizing there was something lurking beneath his field, he climbed down to find a 2,000 square foot building hiding in the dark. With its walls covered in mosaics, made from more than 4 million individual shells. It's an almost incomprehensible work of art and construction, and its origins are entirely unknown. The shells are all from the Margate area, but the design inspiration seems to have been taken from either the Middle East or ancient Greece. The farmer turned his discovery into a tourist attraction by charging people for entry, but the horde of visitors trampling through the grotto with gas lamps leaving soot on the ceilings, destroyed a lot of the archaeological evidence and made radiocarbon dating impossible. It might be a 19th century gentleman's club, or it could be something far older. There's no way of knowing what it was used for, but it's obvious that somebody invested several years of their life into building it. The Gates of Hell are in Turkmenistan. Actually, maybe we're being dramatic. The literal gates of hell don't exist in Turkmenistan because they don't exist anywhere. But a strange phenomenon known colloquially as the gates of hell genuinely does exist in Turkmenistan. It's in the middle of the Karakum Desert, and it celebrated its 50th birthday in 2021. Its less awe-inspiring name is the Darvaza Gas Crater, and it was created in 1971 after the Soviets had a mining mishap. The drilling operation broke into a previously unknown gas cavern underneath the ground, releasing dangerous amounts of methane into the atmosphere. The panicking workers decided to ignite the cloud and burn off the gas. Their scientists told them it would be safe to return and carry on drilling after the gas had burned away in three or four days. Obviously, that didn't happen. Scientists aren't sure why the crater is still burning. The only explanation is that it's getting a constant supply of methane from somewhere, but they're not sure where. It might burn forever, for all anyone knows, but it has at least turned into a tourist attraction. As reputations go, we think that Huska Castle in Blachchechtia has one of the most foreboding in the world. It's said that when it was built during medieval times, its architects made the mistake of placing it directly on top of a portal that leads directly to hell. Sometimes, so the legends say, the demons trapped below it would escape into the real world and terrorize the residents. Perhaps it's no wonder that it's abandoned now if all of that was going on centuries ago. Even the purpose of building the 13th century Gothic castle isn't clear. There's no water nearby, the location isn't and never was strategically significant, and there are no signs of anyone royal or noble ever living here. It's like someone just casually dropped a castle onto the land out of nowhere and for no reason. It doesn't help matters that the castle was briefly occupied by Nazi soldiers during the Second World War, and so its reputation for evil has intensified even further over the past century. These days, it's open to tourists, and those tourists are welcome to walk into the building's chapel. Tread carefully, though. It's said that the pit that leads into hell is directly below the chapel's floor. It probably isn't fair to say that Shenong Altar in Hubei, China is completely abandoned. The enormous stone sculpture receives thousands of visitors every year. However, it's accurate to say that the monolithic sacrificial altar is abandoned most of the time. The altar is enormous and can be seen from miles around because of the elevated position it was installed in. 
Just the head of the sculpture alone is almost 70 feet tall. When you get closer to the altar, you can see that it's actually made of nine separate tripod-style cauldrons along with eight guai. Guai, for those who aren't familiar, are food storage containers. Food isn't left in the containers permanently, but instead is deposited into them by people who visit the altar to either pray for blessings or commemorate their ancestors. The pebbles that surround the altar are also significant. There are five colors represented in the pebbles. One for gold, one for wood, one for water, one for fire, and the last one for earth, thus ticking off all of the elements according to Chinese tradition. The only time you're likely to see the altar busy is during the annual Double Ninth Festival. We're sure you've seen crop circles before, but have you ever seen crop circles underwater? There's a great deal of debate and doubt about the so-called crop circles off the coast of Japan. Most crop circles on land have been put down to the work of human pranksters, but it's difficult to imagine a fraudster creating a similar pattern beneath the waves. It's not even clear how they'd go about doing it. The circle, which was discovered by photographer Yoji Okata in 2012, is approximately 7 feet wide and a little over 80 feet below the surface. After spotting it while diving alone, he returned with a camera crew and may have found some answers. He and the crew observed a pufferfish working at the shapes in the sand, using its fin to carve grooves. Yoji showed the footage to marine experts who suggested that this might be a complicated mating ritual. Female pufferfish create the circles to attract males who swim into them to mate, and the resultant eggs are then laid at the center of the circle, where the structures act as protection against the tide. If that's true, perhaps the crop circles at ground level are misunderstood mating rituals too. San Dung Cave in Vietnam is one of the most incredible wonders you'll ever find in nature. It's over 7 miles long, 700 feet deep, and 500 feet high. Inside the cave, you'll find a self-contained ecosystem, including a river and a jungle. It's the largest cave in the world, and also the most remarkable. It's also where you'll find these strange stone formations, which might be a little uncomfortable to look at for anybody who has trypophobia. Scientists can't agree on whether these formations occurred naturally or whether they were put together manually by people living in the caves hundreds or perhaps even thousands of years ago. Amazingly, nobody other than a few people who live close to it was even aware that Sandung existed at all until a team of British explorers performed a full survey in 2009. The smaller piles of rocks might be cave pearls, formed by water dripping from the cave's ceiling and turning into small balls of mineral deposits. Even if that explains how they were formed, though, it doesn't answer the question of whether they formed this pattern naturally. Nothing screams horror movie like walking into a forest and finding it full of creepy dolls staring back at you from the trees. We think we'd have run away screaming if we saw this, so we salute the courage of whoever stuck around long enough to take these pictures of the so-called Island of the Dolls in Mexico City, Mexico. The dolls, many of which have been decapitated or hanged from the trees as if they'd been executed, were placed on this wooded island on Teshulo Lake by Don Julian Santana during the 1960s. According to local folklore, he reacted badly to his wife's decision to leave him and move to the island because he wanted to live alone. Not long after he arrived, he saw a young girl drown in the lake and was unable to rescue her. He then spent the remainder of his life fishing dolls out of the canal or pulling them out of the trash around Mexico City and then placing them in the trees as a strange memorial to the drowned girl. We don't know how much truth there is to that story, but it's still a scary place even if none of it is true. It's far beyond us to say whether or not ghosts are real. If you want to believe in the supernatural, that's up to you. We do know of an abandoned location where ghosts are supposed to come out and play after dark, though. 
and it's India's Bangar Fort. There are so many stories and superstitions about ghostly activity at this fort that entry is now prohibited after the sun goes down. The fort was built during the 17th century and used to host a whole town's worth of people, but the occupants became so afraid of the alleged ghosts that they abandoned it and built a new town a short distance away from it. The stories about the haunting are colorful. One of them speaks of a wizard who cursed the fort with his final breath after he was fatally wounded by a woman he'd attempted to heal. The gates, temples, and palaces of the old fort stand silently, and tourists still visit during daylight hours, but you're unlikely to catch anyone from the surrounding area in there. The locals think the visitors who visit the site are foolish. Don't let that put you off if you think you're brave enough to stick it out. The Lake of Skeletons sounds like it ought to be the title of a horror movie, but it's actually the site of an archaeological mystery in India. This mass of tangled skulls and bones half-submerged in water is unusual for many reasons, but chief among them is the fact that the lake is more than 16,000 feet above sea level. It's surrounded on all sides by glaciers and frozen mountaintops. It would have been very difficult for our ancient ancestors to reach this remote location in the Himalayas, and there's no obvious reason that they'd have wanted to do so. The real name of the lake is the Rupkund, and it contains the remains of at least 800 people. Their bones have been mixed up and meshed together over time, but they're still surrounded by the spears, gems, knives, and other possessions they once owned. The existence of the lake and its haunting secret was unknown until 1942, when it was found by a British mountain ranger. At the time, he believed the bones to be the remains of lost Japanese soldiers. A more recent scientific study suggests that everyone in the lake perished at around the same time in the 9th century, but we still don't know who they were or how they came to be here. We know that the village of Kuldara in India's Rajasthan region is abandoned, and we know it's been abandoned for a long time. What we don't know is why or how it came to be abandoned, and neither does anyone else. During the 13th century, it was a densely populated and prosperous settlement, primarily inhabited by Brahmins, and it stayed that way until the early 19th century. Today, it's a ruin, and frustratingly, there are no records that might tell us why it was abandoned, even though it took place comparatively recently in historical terms. All we have is speculation. Some people believe that the people who lived here fled persecution by Salem Singh, the former minister of Jaisalmer state. Others say that the water supply that fed the village ran out, or that it was hit by an earthquake that devastated the community. The site is now said to be haunted, which might explain why the superstitious locals never returned to it. It won't stay abandoned forever, though. Since 2015, the Rajasthan government has been working on the idea of turning it into a tourist destination. It's very hard to look at the Matsuo Kuzan mine in Hashimantai, Japan today and imagine it as a place of almost unparalleled luxury. It must have been, though. Why else would it have been nicknamed the Paradise Above the Clouds? The existence of the mine is something of a historical anomaly. Normally, when a large corporation builds homes for workers close to a facility they operate, the homes are of poor quality. The company that operated the Matsuo sulfur mines decided they wanted to treat their employees differently. They provided beautiful homes with central heating, along with hygienic garbage chutes and indoor toilets. That doesn't sound like much now, but in the early 20th century, such facilities were generally reserved for the rich. Life was good here until the 1960s, when the mining business began to struggle. It eventually failed in 1969, forcing the people who once lived here to relocate in search of work. For reasons best known to themselves, they left many of their personal items and belongings in their homes when they left, many of which can still be found strewn around this strange, misty place today. 
The debate about whether New Zealand's Moraki boulders are natural or human-made has been ongoing for decades and is unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. According to Maori traditions and legends, the boulders are what's left of calabashes, kumaras, and eel baskets that washed ashore after the sailing canoe Araita Uru was wrecked off the coast in ancient times. The Maoris also say that the rocky shoals of Matakae are the canoe's petrified hull, and the captain is buried on the nearby headland. Geologists, however, say the unusually spherical rocks were formed 60 million years ago and spent most of that time underground until the sea washed away the mudstone, weathering them into their current shape. Science is on the side of the geologists rather than the Maoris, but it's fine for the Maoris to believe whatever they wish. We shouldn't be surprised that something so unusual exists in this part of the world. There are more than 850 species of marine life on the Eotario coast that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. If a magical ancient canoe were to wash ashore anywhere, it would be here. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!